Okay, here we have what we call a Drazine out of Germany. This is an 1817 bicycle, the first bicycle made by uh, Von Dress, Karl Von Dress out of Germany. And it's got no pedals on it, it's just a walking bike. And the, it was made for the surveyors in Germany and they could get about 10 foot per step. One step would let them travel approximately 10 foot and they could, they could make time and travel through the forest. So then by 1845, the bikes were still wooden, wooden wheels, but they were starting to put pedals on them. And this was called a Velocipede. And this one come out of uh, north of Detroit. Then we leave 1845 and we come down here to 1869. And this is an 1869 Velocipede, a lot more metal. The wheels are just steel ones, just a little bigger than the other. And uh, just a lot stronger. From the Velocipedes, we go to the high wheel bicycle. And the high wheel bicycle, basically in 1870, they were invented in Europe. And so, and then in 1876, Columbia Bicycle Company brought them to the United States. So 1876 to 1892 was uh, the history of the high wheel bicycle in the United States. Well, by 1885, 1884, 1885, too many people were breaking their necks and having bike injuries where they were going in over end heads first. So they invented the Eagle. And this was called an Eagle made in, Mass in uh, uh, Massachusetts. And it's a little front wheel, a big rear wheel, but you had to mount it like a horse. And by the time the pedal got to the bottom, you had to be sitting on the seat. It was a very fast movement. And if you wasn't, you would just go off the other side. So then, they, in 1885, they come up with what they call a star. Well, the star, you had a foot peg that you could actually step up on and hop a time or two, and then stand up, sit on the seat, and then take off. This particular one has levers instead of pedals. And the levers, you could do one lever at a time, or you could do both levers at once. And then the spring loaded, and that spring would, would uh, wind it back up, and then you go again. This one wasn't near as ener energy efficient as, as the high wheel bicycle, and even the Eagle. But the Eagle, it just, you had to be fast. So then the, the high wheel bicycle, this is your kerosene hub lamp, and it would hang in between your wheel, and that would shine light, that would shine light out in so, uh, so you could see at night. But basically, you didn't want to ride at night because somebody could run into the back of you because you're, you're, you're up higher, you're setting up higher. Uh, hard rubber tires. 1876 to 1892 and then we went to the hard tire safety and this started in about 1888 1889 hard rubber tires but a normal type looking bike and this one is an 1890 made by Columbia Bicycle Company so 1890 and then we jump on up here to 1892 and by 1892, they were going to a one-piece air-up tire. These are 30-inch wheels, and this is an 1892 Victor. This was a, uh, a, a big, a big uh, lift to the bicycle when they come up with the air-up tires. Let's see, we missed a little kid's bike. We have children's bikes, and this particular bike is a uh, a bike that was made in Connecticut and in our organization called the Wheelman, when there's, when there's a small child, this bike can be passed around to that small child. And as soon as he outgrows it, it comes back and then goes to another that needs it. So, so somebody don't have to go buy, usually a young couple don't have to go buy a bike for that young child because they, they grow out of it quick. Here we have what we call a lamplighter bicycle. And this is an 1894 lamplighter bicycle made in Chicago. It was called a giraffe. Okay, and so 
This particular bike was used in Manhattan in New York City. The lamplighter, he would lean the bike up against the street light, climb up it like a ladder, get on the seat, take his lighter, light the street light, and then that was his job. He would just ride from street light to street light, lighting the lights. Did I have that on? I didn't. Lighting the street. So. I lost it there, or we lost our light. But anyway, he would light the street lights, and that was his job just street light, street light, street light. There's only three of these known one's in the island of Dubai in a Sheik's museum. One's in England, and then there's this one. And the guy that had it in a museum in New Jersey, he brought her to a bicycle meet in uh, 1996, and he wanted to see somebody ride it. So two of us rode it, and so he hung the picture behind the bike on his wall, and then when his son got ready to sell the stuff after, after the, the man passed away, he gave me a chance to buy it or if it went to auction, it wouldn't be here. So. Oh, we have 99, in 1999, we had a bicycle meet here and we did, we did wine bottles and wine glasses as a fundraiser mm. for it. Uh, bicycle steins. We have, uh, these are all bicycle steins. These down here are all Metlocks out of uh, Germany. Now this one's in 1890s. This one, these big ones back here are 1880s. Okay, then we have a 1895. And this was a League of American Wilbur Stein. And now it's a League of American Bicyclist. And so in the bottom of it, they put a, a litho. You see it? You can see oh, that. Yeah, yeah. They put a litho, and this stein was sold as a fundraiser for good road projects huh. in 1895 before the automobile. They were already thinking about the good road move it, movement and so forth. Uh, wine bottles, we've probably got a hundred wine bottles, all bicycle labels throughout the museum. Uh, this different water bottles, ginger bottles. This is the English ginger bottle that some of the bicycles would keep on their uh, bike and then they could stop and refill it and go again more so English than the United States. We got a bike up here. There was a Shriner in Springfield and it he rode this bike for 22 years. His name was Spaz the Clown. But uh, that was his riding bike that he performed for 22 years. Uh, high wheel bicycles. This guy here, Thomas Stevens, this was the first man right across the United States in 1884. He come from England, he settled in North Missouri, and then he homesteaded, got his land, he brought over his parents and his siblings, and then he moved on to Colorado, Wyoming, California, and he was a journalist, so then he become a bicycle rider. So when he become a bicycle rider, Columbia Bicycle Company commissioned him to ride across the United States from San Francisco to Boston. So he rode across in 103 days San Francisco to Boston. And, uh, and then that was in 1884. And then 86 and 87, he rode on around the world. So he, he wrote two books, Around the World on a Bicycle by Thomas Stevens. Well, since between 1884 and 1892, there were 10 people, including him, that rode the high wheel bicycles across the United States, San Francisco to Boston. And then in 1971, one of our modern bike guys in the, the Wheelman, the modern bike, old bike club, 
he rode his bike across the United States. So since he did it in 1971, there's been 27 of us that's ridden these bikes across America. Now here in, in uh, eight, 1984, Bicycles Playing Cards sponsored a group of eight. And so the gentleman in front in this picture, he rode with the group of eight in 66 days. The gentleman on this bike here, the gentleman behind him on this bike, he rode across in 49 days by himself. And as you ride across, this was, this was your suitcase. This hung on the back of the bike, and this is, uh, you traveled light. This was your suitcase. So, so now there's the 27 of us. These are two of the 27 bikes. And then my bike's outside. That's, that's three of the 27 bikes are in here in the museum. And probably half of these 27 are from other countries that come over here to ride across America. And then my old friend in front, that was his bike, and this was him. He, he rode the bike Centennial in 1976 across America. Now this bike here, this is a Ioana, and this is an Italian-made bike. And this wasn't the bike that, there was a bicyclist, Gio Bartelli, and, and he was uh, an Italian racer, and he, he uh, won two Tour de France's in the 1930s. And he was so popular in, in all the countries, English, England, France, Italy, he could ride anywhere, Germany, all. So the war broke out. So he kept riding and riding and riding. Well, he was so popular that they wouldn't stop him. So he was a good, strong Catholic. So the Catholic Church would fill all the tubes on his bike that they could full of fake IDs. And he would take them to the Catholic monasteries and they would issue them to the Jewish people and give them a chance to get out of the country. Hmm. So he's responsible for about uh, 850 lives, they figure. And he would come into the train stations and he, he, would, he would ride when the trains come in and he would come to a train station and he would cause such an uproar that the guards would come out and try to control it all and the Jewish people would escape off the back of the trains and he, they called him the Italian secret. But pretty, pretty good history. Uh, French bicycle, the Tarot, the same as this is an old Tarot, that's a newer one in the 60s. An English, a Dursley Peterson, that's a reproduction of a 1902 English bike. Okay, we have unicycles. Uh, this unicycle here, this is a 10-footer. We had a, a missionary come in and bring this unicycle and he was getting ready to go to Taiwan. And he says, I've got a little girl three and five and I don't need this anymore. And so, so he, he gave it to me and I told him, I said, you know, if you want it back, just come back and get it. But he could get on this off of the ground. So a lady come in about three months later and she says, oh, I've seen that. He come to our church and he just gets on it right in the middle of the aisle and he rides down to the pulpit. And yeah, it was just amazing how he rode it. This 1928, this was a St. Louis Olympian. This was a uh, rode in the Olympians, Olympics one year by a gentleman. And then Henry Meyer out of Kansas City, he was a three-time Olympian. He was a good friend and he was on the swim team. And then John Howard, our Springfield guy. John Howard, uh, he, he went to Glendale High School uh, Missouri State, the Army, three-time Olympian, set the ran, land speed record 152 miles an hour, and uh, a lot of history. Racing rollers, we have, they would race in place, yellow dial, yellow rollers, black dial, black rollers, and the, the 1910 sign, the setup, would tell you who was winning. And, the 1902 bike, 1915, and then a 1910 setup. Uh, is that too fast? No. no. A pacer bike, a three-seater, and they would use that on the racetrack. They would lead a racer doing a time trial, get him up to 30 to 40 miles an hour, and then uh, 
they would pull off and he would do his time trial. And then the high wheel bicycles, an 1885 Italian racer, and an Australian racer. Back in uh, 1998, I got to go to Australia. There were 64 of us from seven countries that come to Tasmania to, to race the high wheel bicycles. So a, a, a good experience. Okay, got it? Yep. A 1922 Indian. This was uh, just like the Indian Motorcycle Company. An Indian bicycle was a 1920 sidecar. Balloon tired bicycles from the 30s through the 50s. Uh, we have this bike right here, and we have this green one up here. They were re restored by Mr. Shotwell from Oklahoma. That was Carrie Underwood's grandpa. Major Taylor, the fastest bicycle racer in the world uh, around the turn of the century. John Howard, our Springfield uh, native and bicycle racer, he's really involved with uh, making a movie about Major Taylor, the famous black bicycle racer. And probably a couple years from now it might come out. Shaft drive bicycles, drive shafts instead of chains. This is a 1902 with a two-speed drive shaft and it's got suspension on both front and back in 1902. And then this is a, a 1901 Pierce, and it has suspension front leaf springs and suspension beer, beer uh, suspension rear, a spring-loaded shock. Balloon tire bicycles from the 1950s, 1941, 1950s, uh, pretty bikes. You, you get to liking the old bikes, and then you come back and see the pretty colors of these bikes, and, and it, you know, you don't know what you like. A 12-seater, this was made, it's 450 pounds, 23 and a half feet long. It was made in Brooklyn, New York for a Guinness Book record, and I don't know if it made it or not. You load it up with 12 people, 11 people pedal, the back one rides free, and you don't know uh, yeah, I don't know if it made the Guinness Book or not. But 1899 railroad bike. This one was used on the tracks to take the signals, to check the signals, uh, grease the signals if they needed it. Uh, this is a candle light. You put a candle in there, and as the candle burned down, it's spring loaded, it pushes it up and gives you a headlight. These bikes were all used in the Olympics. These were on the racetrack. A US, this was a U.S. team used in 96 at Atlanta. And then Italian, 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 and Japanese. But these were all Olympic bikes. And in, they have a little front wheel, a big rear. And in 1890s, in 1997, they outlawed them because too many people were going end over end having wrecks because of the little front wheel. Uh, ladies' bikes. This is my wife's bike, an 1895 Victor. Buffalo Soldiers. We did a lot with the Buffalo Soldiers this year. Uh, they did a 125th year anniversary of the bicycle experiment where they rode from Missoula, Montana to St. Louis trying to replace infantry horses with bicycles. Uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright, they were in bicycle services. They put this bike together for somebody in Cedar Rapids, Iowa in 1911. They were in bicycle services in 1895, and this was their nameplate they used. And then 96, 97, 98, they had real fancy bicycles, real fancy nameplates. And then they went to airplanes from 99 to, two, to 1910. And then in 1911, they went to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and went back in bicycle services. So this is a 1911 bike with an 1895 nameplate on it. And that's the only nameplate that's ever been seen. The Perkins Hotel always had a shoe shine stand, so it had to have a shoe shine stand. Uh, 
it uh, Oh, this is just different. Uh, Ray, I was in Indianapolis on the Velodrome as doing races. This was Kansas City American Royal Parade, most of them pictures. Uh, this was in Maryland at a, one of our annual Wilman meets we do up there. This was a lady. She lived down the street here, and uh, she helped me get the building to start with Gwen Northington, and that was, that was her. She's in the rest home now. And we have more information. You can just shoot this if you want. Uh, this was John Howard when he set the speed record in 1985. Okay, so then at 152 miles an hour, and that was behind his dragster that he used. And then in uh, 2006, a guy from the Netherlands come over, and he used this dragster, and he set the speed record record at 166 behind that dragster in a shielded. So then John, he trained this woman here from she's 14 to 48. So he took her to the Salt Flats in 2016 and she set a women's record at 147.7, but she was not happy with that. The car wouldn't go fast enough. So she went back in 2018 behind the guy from the Netherlands car. They rebuilt it and they pulled her to 80 and then from 80, she went to 189 miles an hour by pedaling. And at the, the last mile, she averaged 183.9. But this was done by our own local man here from Springfield. Well, thank you so much. Okay, all right. Very, well, very informative, very, very neat. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for doing this.